first part will be dependence on parameters. Yeah, yeah so uh, um, uh, I recall that uh, Elkis is a case of, of one function and uh, function from a variety to a fine line, which is algebraic variety over C. And uh, in, in general, I consider it's uh, uh, a considered divisor. And, but uh, right now, just to simplify notation, we will know divisor and assume that f is proper. Just to s simplify the notation, it will be easier to listen to this case. So, so get kind of family of compact varieties such the total space is uh, smooth. Uh, and I recall that if you have such things, you get a uh, space of uh, uh, critical values, which may be some finite set, critical values. And then for each critical value, you get a local system on Uh, on circle, which is kind of a set of theta in R mod 2 pi z. Uh, uh, and the fiber of the local system, uh, I denoted h bit from beta uh, from my point and uh, theta in S1. The fiber will be cohomology of the pair. I take pre image of a small. A disk with center z i and radius r, where r is very small, and uh, relative relative to the preimage of z i plus exponent of two pi, my c two times r, a point on the boundary of a circle, <coughs> and take a mode with integer coefficient. Yeah, so I get this uh, a local system of. of uh, 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 a building group of finite rank over circle. And then um, mm, I, I had some gluing data, uh, namely if I have a line in, uh, uh, in, in the um, complex uh, line of values of my function f and get several z1, z2, zk, uh, and have oriented line which is will be uh, Mm, mm, parallel to uh, some direction h bar, then uh, um, uh, I consider uh, stocks of my local systems uh, corresponding to uh, point close to the i in length on this line bundle. And what I have, I get a bunch of uh, uh, linear operators between between stocks, uh, kind of actually over integers between stocks of local systems, uh, and uh, this uh, allows me to reconstruct all topology of all um, this uh, uh, system uh, of, of of all my picture. So what I have, one can say, I have collection of operators from i is not equal to j. Uh, which uh, which uh, map which are maps from h beta let's say z i a certain theta i j to h beta z j theta i j where theta i j is argument of z i minus z j. I, I have this. Uh, Data, but now I uh, assume that everything start now depends on parameters. So what I have, I have some whatever, projection by from uh, x to some uh, space u. Uh, it could be topological space or complex analytic space, um, algebraic space, and. Um, and it will be pi will be locally trivial bundle, and fibers of pi 
will be complex algebraic varieties. And uh, f will be a function from x to c, such that uh, for any u, u, I get the function f u from It will be just restriction of f to one of the and uh, this should be my polynomial. No, no, it's not the same. X could be also, uh, x could, could change as a variety. Local trivial topological bundle. Yeah, smooth net, yeah, in some sense, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but what uh, kind of really uh, assumption here is uh, the values come from infinity. So how to say it? Then I get that as u is you can see for each u set of individual values. And what I said, the map from u goes to maximum of absolute value of z. z sits in su. So it's just some uh, negative real number. This map is continuous. So we cannot have uh, suddenly very large particular values at infinity. It's locally bounded, yeah. yeah it's in place, yeah. Because of properness of the map, yeah. It's not clear. I, 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 will, I, will, I will talk about it. In, in, uh, 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 in principle, they can disappear. Ah, so it is not clear if it's locally bounded as it's continuous. Yes, yes, yeah. And do you assume properness in the family that is a prop locally lo a locally proper? Yeah, kind of. That, that X yeah, I consider compact domain in U. I consider pullback of compact domains and to get a, get a proper map. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, P restricted uh, to pi minus one of compact. Is proper. Yeah, yeah. So we get this n n n uh, nice family, but then number of critical uh, values can change. Yeah. So let's assume that we have kind of big open domain. Open domain. When uh, uh, number of critical points stays the same. Uh, Stays the same. Uh, mm. Then what? Uh, 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 what will happen? Uh, so we have moving points. So zi, kind of one can say that zi are functions on u, kind of moving points on plane. Critical values, yeah. Critical values, yeah. No set of. Open domain number of critical values. Um, at least in algebraic situation, it's clear we have this very risky open part when uh, critical values stay the same. Then um, you get complex numbers depending on parameter u, uh, and then mm. over this u zero, we get maybe some kind of uh, uh, universal set of critical points. Fiber over u is equal to su. You have to assume more than the number is. Yeah, it's so it move, kind of move nice. Move continuously. Yes. Yeah, the two of them coincide. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't assume, assume that they coincide. Yes, yeah. What? No, I assume that it's uh, the set. The number of elements stays the same and points move continuously. Yeah. yeah. And it's constant. And points move continuously. Okay. 
Okay. Mm. Uh, then we get this uh, universal mm. uh, set of critical points. And this local systems, uh, 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 which we have before, and we get kind of HB ZI theta, this connection thinks it's form a local system on S1 with uh, parameters theta times this universal set of critical points. Mm. But the operators which we have here, uh, they will jump uh, uh, for some walls. GIJ are. Uh, uh, jump along certain walls. And uh, 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 let, let me kind of roughly describe what is going on. Uh, if, if points kind of move really freely, uh, ge uh, generically all these points will, will n n none three of them will lie on the same real line. Kind of assume that uh, this, if there's no three points in, in line, of, of SU in a line in, in C, uh, and if you move continuously, then this operator will not jump. But suppose at some point three elements uh, will stay on a line, on a real line. Uh, three critical values are on a line. Mm. That's called Z1, Z2, Z3, for example. Uh, maybe I just continue this picture here because it's, yeah. Uh, then if you move uh, a little bit, uh, it's for some U. And it, it happens in real codimension one wall in uh, uh, this uh, this u zero because um, it's one real condition that three points lie on the line, and if you move a little bit through this, so you get some certain kind of hyper surface in, in u, and you get point uh, maybe u maybe u zero call uh, lying on the wall, and then you get two points in the parameter space which are on the left and right side on the wall. And if you move a little bit, you get a triangle looking in one direction. So at u0, you get all three on the line. And in u plus, you get uh, 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 Triangle looking in the uh, opposite direction, and one really can even uh, call the sides of the wall plus and minus according to two, two types of triangle. Yeah, assume, for example, I orient this line also in one way. Mm. Then, uh, uh, lo locally, because we have a local system, we can say, say that this vector, uh, abelian groups do not change. And here we get some operators. T12 minus, T23 minus, T13 minus, which I mean operators coming from uh, the corresponding stocks of local systems in uh, this picture. Here I, uh, and here we get T1 plus, T23 plus, T13 plus. Yeah. So the claim what happens here that it's uh, 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 two operators which says on the shorter sides of triangles do not, do not jump, but what uh, sits on a uh, larger side, it's jump. And here it depends on kind of on conventions, how we norm, uh, say operators going from left to right or right to left, essentially to g12, whatever, minus times t3. 
Yeah. And what happens in the middle? In the middle, uh, I think it will be left or right semi-continuous here. I forgot it. Just consecutive is one of them. It, 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 yeah. Yeah, there is some kind of ambiguity on conventions, but uh, I think it's yeah. Mm, um, yeah. So that's uh, kind of uh, you get this uh, nice behavior, behavior, and how to understand it. Uh, yeah. So there is some kind of very general language which I'll use on my next. Uh, 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 Lecture, it's about wall crossing structures. So it's a bit serious and short. Uh, uh, so, what is a wall crossing structure? It will be wall crossing structure on what? Uh, the wall crossing structure, I think, will be on u0 times uh, c star. Or maybe circle depending on uh, uh, Planck constant or argument for Planck constant. The wall crossing structure is the following you get certain topological space like this, uh, and um, you get Local system of Lie algebras. Yeah, for example, here what will be Lie algebra? Uh, G, depending on u h bar, will be defined by its endomorphism uh, of. Uh, 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 consider endomorphisms of. Direct sum mm. you can see the sum of all critical points with this value of parameters you consider h beta whatever z i z i u and maybe argument of minus h bar consider things and and I take for example the algebra is rational coefficient. Uh, which also graded uh, uh, by some abelian, by, by a local system, again, of lattices. Uh, yeah, gamma huge bar. But in fact, in all cases, uh, local system will depend only on u. Will not depend on h bar, and gamma u will be a kernel of z to s u to z. I take sum of all uh, hyperplane given uh, in coordinate space given by the equation sum is equal to zero, which is root lattice of a m minus one. Isomorphic to root lattice f, m, where m is cardinality of s u. S u. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and uh, uh, so, so this root lattice contains special elements. Uh, and it contains elements e, i, j. Maybe, no, some i to power j. Then such vectors for i non equal for the i non equal to zj belong to SU. Uh, and uh, graded components are the following. Uh, why is this Lie algebra is graded by this lattice? Uh, 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 if gamma is equal to eij. Uh, then the graded component is uh, home 
this grid components uh, is uh, 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 home between two different uh, spaces. And if gamma is equal to zero, you get all diagonal terms. Yeah, so uh, what does it mean in, in plain terms? We get finite, uh, we get finitely many uh, 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 lattices, so multiply by Q, take uh, rational vector spaces. And if consider endomorphism of this direct sum, we get um, block matrices. And you, you, you say that it's uh, graded by root lattice of an. And if we take diagonal terms and weight 0 and the rest in the weight of m. Yeah, so you get. Sorry? If gamma equal to 0, ah. I take all diagonal terms. Yeah, I get this all diagonal terms. Uh, Yeah. yeah, so the general story is that I have local system of lattices uh, uh, and a local system of Lie algebras graded by these lattices. And uh, mm, mm, what else I should have? I just continue the description of what is wall crossing structure. Then I get for each point, I get a map. Uh, or any each bar in uh, uh, my, in my space, I get a linear map from my uh, grading lattice to C, uh, and the map is the following mm. kind of. I'll say there's a great element e, uh, base element aij goes aij goes to uh, zj of u minus the i of u of h bar. Uh, ah, uh, yeah, so we get uh, uh, this uh, thing just before to define what is wall crossing structure. By the way, this is kind of uh, one can. Uh, uh, kind of reformulate a little bit what is going on. We have uh, gamma u grading plus the uh bar gives a derivation of my Lie algebra, but with complex coefficient. And derivation will be semi-simple. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it will be finite dimensional vector, uh, vector space and uh, operators will be diagonalizable. Ah, so it's actually, uh, um, there's a good question, can one generalize to non-semi-simple derivation instead of grading here? So it's a story, but uh, yeah, but it's kind of family of Lie algebras with semi-simple derivation. And now, what is the wall crossing structure? Uh, mm, what is wall crossing structure? Uh, you can see the in this total space some real walls. Real co dimension one walls in uh, U equals C star, which consists of the following points. You can see the points U and H bar, uh, uh, such that there exist 
uh, non-trivial uh, element in my lattice, which is gamma, such as z of u gamma is not, it belongs to, it's a str strictly uh, mm, positive number and corresponding components, what do you know, uh bar gamma is not zero. Uh, yeah, so the real was, yeah, in, in our case, when we get graded by uh, this Dinkin uh, root lattice, it means that uh, there are some zi and zj such that uh, zj minus zi divided, in our case, it means it's Z, zj of u minus zi of u divided by h bar is strictly positive number, so it means that we have uh, two uh, critical values on the real, uh, on the line parallel to the real line, and which don't coincide. So there are real walls, and uh, uh, wall crossing structures is the following thing. For um, any pass, uh, okay, maybe you can short pass, intersecting a uh, wall, we should associate element of Lie algebra, uh, so there's some kind of wall and parameter space, and we have some short pass. And uh, we, when we intersect the wall, uh, 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 we should associate el an element of, of what? Mm. Of Lie algebra, uh, 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 I consider sum of G, U H bar gamma is exactly this point of such gamma such that uh, Z H bar of gamma is strictly positive number. Yeah, generically it will be only one component. For the things, I have an, an, an ele element, maybe called I A, U H bar, and uh, then the condition is the following. And uh, constraint is the following. Uh, if you make again generic loop for small loop, for small contractible loop, uh, which intersect walls in uh, some several points, uh, 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 if you take ordered product of exponent of these elements, Is, ident is identity in uh, corresponding group. Uh, why it makes sense? Because uh, if uh, one can uh, uh, see that it's, if you make small loop, uh, this all uh, grading components will lie in some um, mm, convex corner and you get nilpotent Lie algebra. So it's sits in some nilpotent Lie algebra, so I can make, speak about nilpotent group associated with nilpotent Lie algebra. We are talking about this example. Yeah, only the example, yeah. In general, uh, in next lecture I'll speak about some infinite dimensional example. One should put some more serious constraints on the story, but that's basically uh, the structure. Mm. And uh, uh, this this property, it's essentially saying, uh, uh, saying us that we have this wall crossing structure. Let me uh, explain it to you. Mm. It's kind of... Uh, oops. Okay. Simple thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, did, I don't see the formula exactly. So you want some product of exponent equal to what was the identity? What was the exponent for? for exponent of elements of Lie algebra. 
And this is for a loop that intersects several walls? Se several walls, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it goes around some singularities of co-dimension too. Ah, so you take the ordered product of, yeah. The, yeah. of those, uh, yeah. and the element is of the... the yeah, in this case, it all makes sense because it's some funny dimensional uh, group here. It is the direct sum over... No, no, my group is endomorphism of funny dimensional vector space. It's kind of group jail. But a given element for a given wall, it's, you said it's the direct sum of what? Of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of all gamma such that the gamma is strictly positive real number. I get a map of grading. What's this element uh, A? It's a, it's a wall crossing structure. It's given by some collection of elements for each wall satisfying this constraint. Yeah, some, this is such activity constraint. Yeah, but uh, okay. L l let's me explain you just some real simple cases, kind of simplest case. Uh, uh, case when suppose all my um, singularities or singular points are isolated and actually holomorphic morphs, then this vector spaces H are one dimensional. It's a kind of this dimension of H, whatever this B, uh, if you H is one. Monogram is plus minus one. Yeah, so, so it's essentially kind of have basis. And um, uh, typically uh, in co-dimension two, in real co-dimension two, in uh, this U zero cross C, C star, you get uh, two, two possible pictures. Uh, like this and like this. And what, uh, what is the first picture? means uh, mm, uh, kind of typical point of the world it means that you have two eigenvalues, uh, two critical values uh, divided by h bar, stands the uh, uh, same real, num uh, real line. So you get mm. exactly at this point, what happens, you get some ze1, maybe it's taken the same line as zj1, and somewhere else you get zi2 staying in the same real line as j 2 And on one of them, you have uh, real parts uh, of the first two coincide and another, another two coincide. So the things completely do not talk to each other. And uh, my operators, which I have here, operators T J are just numbers. Yeah, this is in the co-dimension one. Yeah. So, so this is a wall. But in the wall, they must be, the wall in your picture is just when it's real, the line the line or the No, 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 no. Wall in my picture, it means that I have also H bar. It means that I have this equality. I de H bar is also coordinate in my space. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and these are just numbers up to sign, defined up to sign, because we need some conventions. And here, this, these things do not talk to each other, so the rule is the following. If you put some number A, some number B here, number B, uh, uh, number stays the same. And here is uh, A, B, C. I claim that here num numbers depend on parameters in the following way, so C, A, and B plus A, C. And what is, yeah, so what I kind of propose in this picture, exactly this formula, if you replace things by numbers. And uh, what is the meaning of this formula is the following. You consider in this parameter space, you go from one point to another, or you go in this way. So across three, uh, the total combination will be trivial, so it means that if you go one way or another way, it should get the same result. 
and you multiply three matrices. And matrices which one multiply is the following. Here I can easily make mistake. So put plus minus. Yeah, so you have this basic identity for three by three matrices, uh, which uh, uh, tells you that if you go through this three walls and through this three walls, in this order, you get the same result. Yeah, so that's explanation of this formula from wall crossing perspective. Yeah, so it's kind of pretty amusing structure, which you get. Uh, mm. But all, uh, all this, um, uh, it describes what happens when all critical values are still all distinct, but they, they also can merge to each other. So now we can ask what happens uh, on u minus this open part when eigenvalues merge. merge. And, um, and again, uh, again, assume isolated morphs uh, on u0 isolated uh, more singularities. Uh, mm, and if, uh, well, let's say it depends on parameters, this kind of holomorphic and kind of U analytic. And projection is analytic. Uh, then in complex codimension two, in complex codimension one, or the same as in real codimension two, what happens, two critical values can merge. Yeah, there's also another possibility that the two critical values kind of coincide, uh, but uh, they do not talk to each other. But the interesting part, when they really merge, so um, what is a typical example? Consider like dimension of my fiber is one, and dimension of the base is also one, uh, let's call it coordinate u and coordinate x here, and the function f will be something like x cube over 3 minus ux. Yeah, you can imagine some other variables, but uh, 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 oh, maybe it's not necessary one here, so we have coordinates x1, xn. And uh, I, I write only formal near singular points. You should imagine that it's compactified some way. Mm. Yeah, so you get uh, stuff. So what are critical points? F of S of u. You can see the best derivative is equal to zero. So you say that x one of u square is equal to u. So it's plus minus square root of u. Mm. And critical values You substitute here uh, uh, square root of u, you get minus two third u to power three over two. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when I consider this full crossing picture, for example, I just put h bar equal to one. Mm, I restrict to small sub-manifold. Um, when I get walls, uh, walls, it means that 
I have just two critical values and the difference uh, should be, so z, uh, z1 and z2 of u are two critical values and the, so the difference should be re real and positive. So it means that imaginary part of u to power three half maybe or so is equal to zero. And so it means that u to power cube is a positive real number. And what we get? So we see that locally the three walls are uh, three rays. And here we get 120 degrees everywhere. And this U plane. Mm, and what I claim is that my numbers, which I have here, my numbers are all equal to one. Mm, uh, uh, because in this, in this simple case, all space of one dimensional, these matrices are just one by one matrices, just numbers. And claim equal to one. And this is uh, something really nice here. It's related to the folic identity. It's kind of similar to this identity. What is going on here? Why write these things? I want to grow, I want to go along. Mm. Mm. Uh, this path. And I claim that the total uh, monodrome which I constructed is again trivial. Yeah, so it's like wall crossing, uh, associative condition for wall crossing condition, but in a point when I don't have any wall crossing structure anymore. Yeah, it's kind of generalization of associativity constraint. Mm. 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 Why I multiply such things? Yeah, one, one, zero, one, it's a matrix which I associate to crossing the wall. It's upper triangle matrix with element one. But why I multiply by this guy? Uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's a matrix second in two dimensional space which are two, uh, I have two critical points, but if I move from here to here, these two critical points interchange the role. So I should interchange them and also should care about orientation because I said that it's, it's, uh, uh, mm, uh, this is actually not, uh, spaces are one dimensional, but base element, you know, up to sign. One should take care of orientation. It turns out that one of them should predict minus one. And then you get this remarkable thing. So this, this cube mm, equal to zero. Mm, so, uh, so there is something which uh, 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 happens on u cross u zero. One can say that it's kind of generalized associativity constraint. Uh, uh, if you take product over some small loop in U0 uh, surrounding uh, some, this divisor, again, composition order product is trivial. And, and what, uh, what all this give, will give us, because uh, composition for any loop is trivial, so the result, uh, maybe in, again, in U cross C star, and the conclusion that we get we get local system on uh, U cross C star uh, by modif yeah, we get kind of wrong local system on U zero. Which, didn't, which, uh, which don't accept, accept to, uh, places when critical values collide. And we mod modify it along the wall so that it will be extended to local system everywhere. Mm. And this local system is, uh, what is it? It's global H, uh, uh, H beta, um, mm, H bar of, uh, it's fiber at 
u, uh, fiber at uh, bar is equal to global Betti cohomology of uh, x u, of u okay, uh, which is um, cohomology of pair when I put uh, cohomology of pair of x u and the um, main when f f u divided by h bar tends to minus infinity. Okay. Now, so that's a uh, rough description of what happens topologically. In fact, there's something else which I want to describe uh, 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 when critical values collide. It's some kind of stability uh, effect uh, for, for merging uh, critical uh, uh, values. Uh, uh, it will be something um, very general. It kind of it does depend on the have algebraic variety and so on. Uh, so I'll first uh, speak about isolated singularities. Yeah, suppose we have a germ of function, of analytic function. Again, this fun my function f uh, from a, from a ball in C n to C. Germ uh, uh, at zero, so uh, restriction of from function to ball containing zero. Uh, mm, and with isolated critical point. Then, uh, for such uh, thing, you have a Milner number. Some invariant, Milner number, mu, uh, of function and maybe point uh, p0. Uh, or just called mu. It, it just, uh, it can be described in two ways. You consider uh, mm, mm, homology of the ball. And consider pre-image, and assume that f of p0 is some z0, uh, z0 plus epsilon, where epsilon very small. So this cohomology will stabilize, and you get, mm. I think, uh, and the similar number is uh, it's the same as rank of uh, consider functions of the ball and mod out by ideal generated by derivatives. We'll find it could dimension ideal. Uh, yeah, in fact it's better to consider it's, it's actually a, a rank of top degree cohomology of complex of omega of the ball with differential cup with df. The cohomology will be sits on it only top degree. And if you trivialize, kind of identify with volume element, you get top degree cohomology here. Yeah, so it gets Milner number, which is just some, for non-trivial singularity, non-negative number. It's mu equal one, it's equivalent to get more singularity. And for fractal for x cubed, mu equal two, and so on. Yeah, so it's some uh, characterization of singularity. And uh, this number behaves kind of stable way. Suppose you, you move a little bit, deform a little bit function. Little bit f. So it will be some function depending on parameter. And then um, in this ball, this critical point will be replaced by several critical points. 
maybe P, P0, you get something like collection of PI of U, you get collection of uh, and critical points, and Milner number, it's all Milner number of my function and point F0 and uh, P0 is equal to sum over I M F U E P. Mm. Uh, 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 no, yeah. uh, there could be also several critical points above a given. Yes, yes. No, no, no. I can see the critical points. Ah, it's, okay. it's for each critical point. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, so it means that the sex cube can decompose to two more singularities. It's kind of num Miller number. It's number of more singularities on which the critical points can decompose. Uh, yeah, so you get this some kind of positive number. I decompose some of another positive number. You get. Um, uh, this conservation law, uh, and uh, um, and this conservation law has a generalization. Uh, maybe. some nice generalization. Uh, suppose you get some holomorphic function on some global variety. And uh, uh, let's consider a, a set of uh, critical points of f, so the set of all points in x said that the f restricting to tangent space x is zero. Uh, and uh, decomposing is a union of connected components. Some union. And suppose it's one of them is compact. Uh, Now, I will speak about only this uh, uh, connected component. Mm. Uh, then one can associate with this the following uh, contribution for this component, depending again on angle. B it for beta, C is for the direction. Uh, F. And it's defined in a similar way to uh, definition of uh, uh, first definition of Milner number, uh, namely you do the following. You consider, yeah, first of all you pick some remaining metric, and don't assume this thing is scalar, so this will be remaining metric on x. And what I take, I take delta neighborhood of this uh, my component. And take f minus one, uh, maybe just call it zero. Yeah. Uh, uh, small z zero, small z zero is f of this large component because of, uh, on each comp uh, on every component of critical set the function is constant, so it will be just some complex number, and I take preimage of this complex number plus. Uh, epsilon exponent i theta is integer coefficient, uh, and I take limit. I take double limit. First epsilon will go to zero, and then delta will go to zero. Uh, there are some natural maps, and this thing is stabilizes. So limit is well defined. Yeah, so it's a definition of a generalization of. Uh, this is a commodity of pair. And I define kind of Milner polynomial associated with my component as sum from i to minus n to plus n. n is the dimension of x, as usual. Uh, 
uh, rank of h a plus n beta c does depend on theta of this zero f times t to power e, and it's a polynomial in Laurent polynomial variable t with no negative coefficients. Maybe called this kind of mu uh, e, uh, my f, and instead of cri uh, critical points, consider connected component of critical points. You get this polynomial, and uh, claim it also satisfies the same property. If you deform a little bit, so you get very comp kind of complicated critical set. I deform it can be decomposed by several pieces, maybe of smaller dimension. Uh, I get the same equality. This, uh, this uh, Poincare polynomial will be equal to sum of Poincare polynomials of uh, uh, deformed sink. Uh, and in fact, one can construct isomorphism similar to what I explained to you before, not just equality of polynomials. And uh, mm, and get similar property. Uh, actually, how to write it more scientifically? This thing, uh, uh, this thing one can write as a, uh, mm, this is HBT sigma. But, uh, is the same as uh, hypercomology of this, this zeta and consider shift of vanishing fi uh, functions from maybe constant shift. Yeah, awesome. You get a more scientific notation. If you like, uh, mm, uh, there is something uh, very bizarre. Uh, in for isolated singularities, Milner number is always positive, but it could for non-isolated singularities, this Milner polynomial could be zero. So the phantoms, which things which cannot really guarantee that they appear, disappear. And there exists the phantoms. Uh, said so that is, uh, this this Milner the sink is actually zero. This, sir? You can only take torsion coefficients. But on global variety, yeah, 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 it's, yeah it's not clear. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a situation. Um, it will be not surprised that the situation if you put any local system on this critical local set, you get zero upper cohomology. Now, at least I, with constant coefficients, I can, at least I can explain it. It's, Ah, so not only the rank, but the group themselves. Groups themselves are zero, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Comologically, it's kind of doesn't exist, yeah. Uh, and example is very simple. Your variety, you take product of elliptic curve. You don't know if the component can disappear somehow. Sorry? Yeah, it's, it's could disappear in principle, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe there's some other, yeah, in fact, I, I don't believe that this can really disappear, but uh, uh, yeah, it looks hard to believe, but, but at least homologically I cannot see that they cannot disappear. Uh, so let's, well, let me show this simple example of phantom. Uh, so you get point x and t, say. Uh, and you get function equal to t square, just depends on second variable, but you mod out by involution. x goes to x plus x zero, t goes to minus t, and x zero it's a two torsion point on elliptic curve. Then, then on a quotient you get critical points that will be elliptic curve divided by this shift. But local system will be a rank one local system with non-trivial monodromia and it will, have, it will kill all cohomology. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, uh, 
Uh, this doesn't disappear, yeah, because, but, uh, because you can put cohomology with non-trivial local system. You can twist by local system, and then it will not disappear. But uh, I don't know, maybe one can cook out. It, it's, it's, uh, because there are some people constructed examples in, uh, I think, one connected examples when cohomology is zero of these phantoms. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah, so these things. Mm. Mm. It disappears, and just maybe before uh, we break, I'll just say kind of one couple of words about uh, 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 Hodge theory. Uh, ah, first of all, uh, this uh, Milner polynomial. This. is uh, uh, mm, symmetric with reflection t to Gauss the inverse. It falls from Poincaré duality. Uh, but uh, mm, uh, in kind of good case, uh, so in fact, it's maybe put a conjecture. Uh, uh, Assume that that z zero uh, uh, there exists an embedding z zero to a Keller manifold. Not my manifold, but some another Keller manifold uh, of different dimension. Uh, I would say that's kind of singular space is Keller. Z zero is one of components of my critical. I have a just complex manifold. Have a function, and I assume we have. So we just the given value of the parameter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't do speak about parameters now. I just speak about taken with the reduced structure or with the structure given. Even with reduced structure, I think, yeah, I think it's z reduced could be embedded to killer manifold. Uh, then, uh, then this could be some kind of uh, 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 good hot theory. Then, uh, mm, if you consider hypercomology of Again, neighborhood of the zero uh, with form, with a kind of analytic forms, uh, with differential HD plus DF. That's, uh, that's cohomology, uh, this rank uh, is, uh, doesn't jump as H bar goes to zero. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's clear for H bar not equal to zero that it's coincide with this H beta. And automatically, without any assumption, is equal to, for H bar not equal to zero, get comp beta de Ram comparison. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm just writing. Nonsense. I think this things. So it means it's kind of vector bundle of a formal line. Uh, yeah, this guy uh, can be compared with uh, um, vanishing cycles. Yeah, so it gives you some kind of Hodge theory, and moreover, you get kind of left shots. Uh, decomposition. Uh, so it means that if consider uh, e even an odd part of this Milner polynomial, uh, and consider what is a graph of coefficients, you get kind of bell-like curve. So there will be they'll increase and then decrease uh, uh, these coefficients. So it will be some primitive cohomology. Yeah, that's a little bit more than what, what one can extract from literature, and but I think it's that's a really uh, sufficient condition that reduced part of critical point set is itself a scalar, and the rest is automatic. Okay, so now I'll make make a break for maybe five, seven minutes. Yeah, yeah so it will be kind of. Uh, 
very kind of vague ideas, and I will go to concrete example. Yeah, suppose we get infinite dimensional kind of x n kind of infinite dimensional complex analytics manifold. Yeah, I don't know what is it, but uh, kind of at least should have tangent spaces, which are complex vector spaces. So on, and and I get some function from these things. I get a holomorphic function. A holomorphic function, and assume that uh, 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 set of critical points, kind of critical points. Is uh, say finite union, the joint union of first it's compact and finite union of a uh, complex analytic space or in usual sense kind of of finite type, finite dimension here. Yeah. Uh, mm, maybe very singular one. Uh, uh, why it's Kind of natural assumption because you uh, uh, morally should fall from the conditions that if consider second derivative of uh, of this uh, function is operator from tangent space of contention. This should be some kind of friend column operator. Mm, uh, so it should have only finite dimensional kernel because these two spaces are. More or less the same dimension, infinite dimension. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, a typical situation, and uh, in this case, uh, we can replace f near each component. Uh, each the alpha by finite dimensional model. Yeah, that's uh, in in general. It's not mm, uh, what what should what one should do. You get some kind of compact finite dimensional set, the alpha in some of this infinite dimensional space, uh, and then one should choose. Uh, mm, a sub bundle in tangent space to x infinity restricted to the alpha uh, of finite codimension. Finite codimension and uh, uh, kind of uh, and such it in, uh, kind of will be kind of t transversal and such a t transversal intersecting with maybe scheme theoretic tangent space at each point which is finite dimensional is zero. Mm. Uh, so it means that uh, you can uh, extend it to a kind of vibration, to foliation of maybe finite co of co of finite codimension, of finite codimension, uh, near near L, L alpha. And one can uh, think about it's really kind of vibration, not foliation. Mm. So you get some uh, neighborhood of the alpha, an open neighborhood. It maps to some finite dimensional space. And uh, this condition uh, essentially means that function restricted to fibers uh, has uh, Get some kind of projection. Maybe you find it. Uh, and function restricted to fibers uh, of maybe point U uh, in uh, any point in U find it has only one isolated more singular point. 
for this projection. I have neighborhood. Uh, uh, what essentially I want to say is that in, in all uh, variables except finitely many, one can kind of re re think that my function is Morse function, sum of squares. Yeah, this. Your, your function is kind of a fi finite dimensional function, finite dimensional manifold. No, no, here I get function infinite dimensional manifold. But the, the infinite dimensional part is quadratic. It's kind of quadratic, yeah. yeah. And then I can uh, make a new function. Is there any topological abstraction for this? Like, you have no. to find the family of such C? No, 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 that's not topological abstraction. It's analytic. It's analytic. I take something of uh, some finite complex codimension, so this churn classes will be not an abstraction. Uh, and, and the fact that, uh, and the following the quotient, yeah, but it, yeah, be, yeah, because it's will be uh, in general quotient thing is not 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 Hausdorff, yeah. And yeah, but I think here there's really no trouble, yeah. And uh, and you get new function on on u finite kind of f finite, uh, which is defined the following. Uh, it's valued point uh, uh, u will be critical value, unique critical value of f restricting to the fiber. So here there are no coincidences when you go along, no, ah, because of the assumption. Uh -huh. And we just uh, do the story, so we get some finite dimensional replacement. And uh, and then you see that you get a, sh a constructible sheaf of finishing si cycle in derived category phi of f finite of the u is in db constructible of this z alpha. Yeah, the alpha will be the same as critical points of f, f finite. Mm, okay. Yeah, so you get a uh, sheaf of finishing cycles. But there is a trouble here. If you choose different finite dimensional reduction, you get a different shift. It's, uh, it's, there's some ambiguity. Ambiguity by tensoring by uh, 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 rank one local system with monodromy plus minus one. Mm. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, so one could, uh, should make this choice. Uh, why it happens? Uh, kind of imagine this is some finite dimensional thing with some finite, with a finite, and, and make a uh, uh, multiply. Make kind of uh, Tom Sebastiani sum, kind of add function additional variable. Uh, uh, ah, then consider vector bundle, complex vector bundle, even finite dimensional uh, vector bundle E with quadratic form Q. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then quadratic form uh, gives you uh, change your shift function cycle by one dimensional space and it depends on rotation. But can you relate any to five dimensional reductions yeah. by going through a third one such that you have this? Yes, yeah, but it still get ambiguity. You, can, uh, you have kind of uh, many in infinite dimensional case, I think it's, you don't have canonical shift of vanishing cycles. You get shift of vanishing cycles defined up to multiplication by this plus minus one. Yeah, I'm asking with the two five dimensional reductions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the third one that it looks like this. Yes, 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 exactly, yeah. That one can do. Yeah, so one needs some, uh, do this choice uh, uh, of this local system. Mm. And that's it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, and this something I'll call orientation choice, uh, um, which something which have to be done. And now, and then, then what? Then it will be a, a, a very nice thing. What happens if you make this choice? 
Then you get uh, shifts of vanishing cycles. So you get some set of critical values. kind of the i, the alpha, which will be a function of the alpha. As you can see, you get critical values. Then you get a local systems over S1 uh, by taking homology with shift of vanishing cycles uh, uh, of the alpha and this uh, kind of uh, shift of regularized shift of vanishing cycles um, of my function divided minus critical value and divided by h bar of constant shift in some finite dimensional model. Yeah, also shift dimension, yeah, there is something interesting also going on. Uh, when one go to six, one uh, shift uh, to, uh, when you go different reductions, you get a shift in degree homology, you should remove dimension of your space. Uh, like in this Milner polynomial, I shift uh, the grading by dimension, complex dimension. Yeah, and then it will be uh, well defined. So you get local systems. And then one kind of, kind of uh, then one should have this operators T, whatever, ij, from the i to the j, uh, fr from homology from the alpha i to the alpha j. Uh, and if you try to think, should, or should have some notion of gradient flow and so on in infinite dimension. So, so I'm confused. Do you consider only finite function? I mean, this. What? Shift of vanishing cycle. For finite function. For finite function. So the shift in the dimension. It's ah, then a shift by dimension of finite dimensional guy. Yeah. Dim you, you find it. And you stabilize it. It's a choice orientation. Okay. Yeah. And this is a choice which you should make. Yeah. How you organize the things. Yeah. Then one should count Tij. It will be some, something like generalization of number of gradient lines. And this should be kind of elliptic problem. Again, space of solution should be finite dimensional. Uh, maybe real, uh, whatever, semi-analytic space. Uh, gradient lines for some gradient flow. Because uh, you remember in finite dimensional, if for more singularities, this operators, in case when you get more things, which are integer numbers yes. counting some gradient lines. Yes. And then in infinite dimension, we should be able to write some notion of gradient flow and to rephrase what is going on here. What is the elliptic problem? What do you refer to? Ah, uh, to write to, to write a gradient line from one critical point to another, it should be reduced to some elliptic uh, solution of nonlinear differential equation with elliptic symbol. Okay. Yeah, you'll, you'll see an example right now. By the way, the infinite dimensional spaces are they things like Banach analytic spaces or yeah. manifold? No, no, no. The idea it's uh, no. The idea it's uh, uh, it should should. Do, should not matter at all. In concrete examples, you should make sense of individual stuff, of what a gradient lines, uh, without going to foundations. And then define cohomology uh, through kind of back door, without looking at what are infinite dimensional cohomology and so on. So what is a concrete example which I'll look is the following. Suppose I get uh, I want to get infinite dimensional manifold with a function. I start with holomorphic symplectic manifold. Uh, so it's holomorphic, uh, it's kind of complex analytic variety with holomorphic symplectic form. And dimension is now 2n. Yeah. For some n. And I pick two, uh, let's say, closed. Um, uh, again, uh, complex analytic, holomorphic, Lagrangian sub varieties, sub manifolds. And what this will be my space? It will be space of C infinity maps. Yeah. One can probably put some Banach, CK maps, but it, uh, maps from what? From interval 0, 1 to M, such that F0 belongs to F0. If one belongs to L1. Yeah, so I get the space. This space carries a canonical 
Mm. Uh, I think it's kind of complex manifolds. It's kind of like product of all points of intervals from a manifold time. So you are considering quantum mechanics. Yes, yes, quantum mechanics. Yeah, yeah, but this is infinite dimensional complex manifold. Yeah, tangent space is complex if you look to this, and it has canonical one form, closed one form. Uh, what is one form uh, called alpha? It's uh, you integrate two form over the interval. So, uh, what precise definition? Uh, kind of. And take pullback of omega by evaluation map, which maps from x infinity and zero one to m. Yeah, it's one form, mm, but it's not exact. It's uh, to be exact. Uh, so, you want to write this uh, differential sum function? One need to make some assumption here. Uh, so we assume that omega is ex uh, symplectic manifold is exact in the sense that omega is written as differential one form eta. Uh, eta is kind of one form of m. Uh, and it's, so eta is chosen. And also both Lagrangian manifolds are exact in the sense that Eta restricted to Li is written as differential of Fi, where Fi is holomorphic map from Li to C. Yeah, so we make choice of of eta and f0, f1. Okay, then the function f, uh, then, uh, then f infinity, such that I alpha is differential of infinity, it's uh, very easy to write. It's a function on a pass given by integral of the pass of pullback of my form eta. Let me begin on plus minus signs. It's very easy to get confused. Something plus f1 at one end of the interval minus f0 to another end of the interval. Yeah, it's easy to check that the differential gives us two form. Okay. What are critical points? Wait, you don't want to put any just no, 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 nothing. That's it. Yeah, just two Lagrangians. So PDQ and that's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are critical points? It's very easy to write what are critical. Just see when derivative is zero. In terms of it's kind of constant maps from zero to some point. M sitting in intersection. So the set of critical points is isomorphic to the intersection. And let's assume that intersection is compact. OK. Mm. Uh, there is a kind of uh, question which I explained to you in general situation. There is kind of ambiguity how to put the shift of vanishing cycles. You could kind of, it's well defined up to plus minus one holonomy. And here it's. Excuse me, Mark. The critical point is a manifold. Sorry? Like this. These are not the points. This is. No, no. A set of critical points is an intersection of two, two submanifolds. Could be very, non, very bad, non transversal. So these, these are not the points. They, they don't intersect in point, they intersect also. In, in some maybe uh, singular, very singular spaces, yeah, yeah. The intersection is not transversal in general. And uh, 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 so locally, uh, one can do the following. One locally can identify M, M near some points in L0. One can identify M with cotangent bundle to L0. I just put some kind of transversal. Lagrangian foliation, and also one can put transversal Lagrangian foliation such that it will be also transversal to L, L1. And uh, then L1 will be a graph of function. Or maybe some function uh, FL0. Graph of differential function, where F, uh, FL0 is some function on L0. L0, sorry, L0. Sorry, sorry, it's the mixing languages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Mm, sorry? This is only... In only locally. Yes. Yeah. And then you see that locally, it looks like a critical point of function finite dimensional variables. So you get this finite dimensional reduction. And then you get shift of vanishing cycles. And, and assume that F and null on intersection, on component of intersection is zero, on near my points, I get shift of vanishing cycles. But the problem is, uh, so locally it's well defined, but again, it's defined up to multiplication by plus minus kind of uh, one dimensional space. If you uh, uh, analyze uh, carefully, if you ch change the splitting. And globally, it's not well defined, so one should do something. Uh, and to order, in order to get orientation uh, choice, uh, uh, it's something which several people are, uh, analyzed recently. Mm. No, I don't understand the ambiguity because locally, because of the, the symplectic form, yeah. you can, uh, the, there is not much... Yeah, but you can still uh, uh, choose this identification with cotangent bundle in a different way. And then if I follow... Uh, no, but the differential is the same. The, all those ways are, are, are connected to each other. It's connected, but it's not, it will be not simply connected. It will, the space of choices will be not simply connected at the end of the day. Because I think that because of it's the fact that the, the symplectic form goes over to the yeah. standard form, yes? Yeah, yeah. And this, I think, is a... Yeah, you, you get some, eventually, you get some not simply connected parameter space, even locally, so it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So the story which was analyzed maybe by Joyce and Braff and some other people. Uh, uh, so you need differently certain choice, and the choice is uh, uh, the following. Uh, I can def define. Uh, uh, you, you should fix some kind of class of H two of manifold in Z mod two, and. In fact, one needs some kind of representative of this class, mm. plus representative. And a uh, convenient choice will be the following. You choose some line bundle, LM, line bundle on M. Just topological says that beta will be first chain class of the things mod 2. Uh, and then on each Li, L0, L1, you should identify restriction of beta, should identify, it's again some choice with uh, first chain class of canonical class of Li. It's kind of top degree form, mod 2. Yeah, so uh, for example, if you make these things, uh, what, you, what you do, you choose square root of uh, the line bundle, which is Lm restricted to Li tensoring by canonical class of Li. And it's in real life, it's really very essential thing. Even in the case of cotangent bundle, uh, this beta, kind of, if beta, if m is cotangent bundle to x, uh, then beta is, uh, this Lm will be tangent uh, pullback of canonical class to x. It's definitely not trivial things to choose, yeah. So you, you need this uh, nasty plus minus one choice. Uh, so we, then we get well-defined shift of finishing cycles. Uh, I don't just it's pure topological. Yeah, it's completely topological data, yeah. And, and what are gradient lines? Uh, gradient lines are pass in x infinity, yeah? So, mm, yeah, for example, if m is Keller, 
if you choose, choose some Keller metric, then on the space of x infinity also one can choose Keller metric. Uh, so you choose Keller form 1, 1. What will be Keller form 1 x infinity? Uh, if you get some, uh, let's say, pass, and consider uh, tangent vector, so you get uh, can two sections of a tangent bundle, uh, kind of you get some pass phi, and you get phi of dot 1 and phi dot 2 are tangent vectors in the space of pass. Uh, then uh, the uh, things, uh, the, uh, the Keller form will be kind of integral from 0 to 1, uh, pairing in tangent space my manifold multiplied by dt. So we use volume form dt on, on interval. One can choose different volume form, get different Keller metric, yeah. So yeah, so it's an uh, um, example of gradient line. And if you write what is a, uh, what is a pass, it turns out it will be maps from what? From 0, 1 times r, kind of time, time parameter along the pass. Uh, and this is, so it's get a map from a strip uh, to m which is uh, pseudo-holomorphic. Well, I missed the point. Where did the... Everything was quantum mechanical, was one-dimensional. Yes, yes. Pass integral. Suddenly you get two-dimensional. Yes, now, because I, I should consider, in general, gradient lines in my space. So I consider pass in space of pass. Yeah, so automatically get... Uh, and then the right equation, what is the gradient line? You get pseudo-holomorphic pseudo curves. For some pseudo, uh, for some uh, almost complex structure, which is not the original structure, but something completely different on them. Yeah. Now, so get um, the thing and um, um, and the, the claim that this, uh, this is a series of kind of pseudo holomorphic curves with boundary, and this gives uh, some uh, this, uh, integer numbers, so in general uh, operators between cohomology, which I talked about. And then one can play the same game, consider manifolds depending on parameters with functions, so you start to move your, log maybe Lagrangian manifolds start to move, and then you get flat connections. Uh, uh, so, so what will be kind of concrete example. And then uh, I just want to show that it gives some explicit formulas. So the... M. M was the original... M original manifold, yeah. Which is complex. Complex. Fix the complex structure. And, and which almost complex structure is it? It's, it's, it's determined by Keller metric and holomorphic form. By kind of point-wise you use some kind of Hyper, hyper Keller, if it's Hyper Keller, yeah, then can use one of the integrable. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's something which uh, in principle you don't want to do. Uh, but claim is the following. Suppose M is cotangent bundle to some manifold X. Uh, and I will have L0 in M will be exact Lagrangian submanifold. Yeah, here this two form is a kind of dp dq is differential of mutual form eta, this canonical one form of cotangent bundle. And then we can speak about exact Lagrangian, so it means that L0 is df0 for certain. No, 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 I, I just want. To uh, the main point. I take a uh, um, manifold with Lagrangian, and uh, and also assume that L zero intersecting with uh, pro projection of L zero to a x. 
this projection is proper map, so it, it has only uh, uh, fibers do not go to infinity. Yeah, so there are plenty of such things, so you get such story. I claim that you have a sort of canonical uh, mm, bundle with flat connection on X. Maybe depending on parameter H bar. You can introduce parameter H bar, it's, it's, it's always in my game. Mm, how, how do we do uh, this? How we define this uh, mm, uh, bundle with connection? Uh, uh, so I get fibers depending on point on X and H bar. Uh, the definition is the following. Mm. Again, kind of for generic X and H bar, uh, you do the following. You consider my manifold related to pair space of paths from uh, L0 to uh, L1 depending on point X, which is cotangent point and point X. So I have, this will be my variety L0, this will be my variety L1. To point X. Mm. I have two varieties, and as I explained. Uh, 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 Wait, so X is a long X, right? X, uh, capital X. Yes. No, capital X, it's here, yeah. Yeah, fixed point on my X, so yeah. L, L1 is based constant section, so for... No, L1 is, is, no, it's not constant, it's kind of, yeah, it's fiber. It's just momentum, so just fiber direction. Yeah, yeah, fiber direction, yeah. Now, uh, then I get a family of my infinite dimension manifolds with function depending on parameter. Uh, this path space, I get a family of uh, my infinite dimension manifolds depending on parameter. And then I explain to, uh, to you that it should be some Wall, or wall, some isomorphisms, and so on, and uh, and then we should get a local system on parameter space multiplied by c star. Turn x cos c star. Maybe, maybe this say even like this. Uh, now that's something which one can do uh, uh, very concretely. Um, ah, uh, yeah, 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 it's kind of transcendental construction, uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, this construction will solve this. Um, I have this Belov Canel many years ago uh, conjecture that automorphism of Weyl algebra is the same as sim polynomial simple automorphism of vector space. And that was the generalization if we get kind of simply connected Lagrangian submanifold should give some canonical d module. But uh, uh, simply connected is automatically exact because this form uh, can have any trivial periods. Uh, yeah, so it's um, mm, kind of concrete story here. So you get another some construction which is uh, analytic instead of using characteristic. Yes, yes, instead of using characteristic P, yeah. I don't know it's how it's related, yeah, but. Uh, is it, uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, so, as far as I understand, so the, the calculation yeah. should be that you are, uh, oh, in the language of quantum mechanics, you are calculating. Uh, <coughs> that you have in the first, in L1. Yeah. You have wave functions as the functions of all the momenta in PDQ. Yeah. They are PDQ. You no, uh, yeah, no, maybe, maybe you don't. Uh, yeah, I don't have very little time. Maybe I just finish. We can actually go to discussion. Yeah. Yeah, for example, there are some kind of tricky, uh, kind of very concrete example. Mm. Uh, let's consider 
uh, one can construct some embedding like, like so of C to C square, uh, algebraic embedding. Uh, in the image, it, it will be cotangent bundle to X, which is X is uh, C. And this will be Lagrangian, uh, which will be M. It will be my Lagrangian L0. One can construct very tricky uh, uh, exact Lagrangians. Uh, so, for example, we get rational curve C in C2. Yeah, I just want to give you some example. Like point T, C in C goes to point with coordinates T plus whatever, T to power 4, T square. Yeah. It's kind of not obvious, but one can check that it's embedding. Different points goes to different points. Because, uh, yeah, it's, in fact, it's, if, you, if you get uh, 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 two points goes to the same points, then you see that uh, if you get two equations, then it implies that t1 to power 4 is equal to t2 to two power 4 by squaring this equation. And then you get this t1 equal to 2t2. Yeah, so it's really embedding. Yeah, so it's in C2. Yeah? D squared, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's easy to check that this, this guy is an embedding. It gives point to some tricky D module. And how I will construct this D module? Uh, I just follow this all, uh, all lines and construct wall crossing structure. Uh, I write it, my form. Uh, Q and P, let's say, yeah, kind of like standard coordinates. The module and is what is corresponding to this bundle with flat connection? Or? Sorry? Yeah, it's will bundle flat connection, but it will have also some irregular structure. Uh, in this case, it's not interesting to speak about, it will be bundle on C with flat connection, but, but also with some Stokes uh, filtration to infinity. Ah, so it's algebraic? Algebraic, yeah, you get algebraic. Like the construction, is it, is it algebra geometric or does it use it? No, 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 no. Construction is not algebra geometric. It will be, construction will be completely transcendental. But, and, 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 so it doesn't have an algebra geometric structure? A priori, no, 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 no. So it's just, just holomorphic. Yes, but also one have kind of Stokes filtration to infinity, so one can construct by classification of a regular singularity, algebraic bundle. Ah, so you have to, in addition to do yes, the Stokes yes. infinity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you write form PDQ. Restricting to the things, you write this differential over function. Yeah, f0. You should have this function f0. You get some function f0, which is, I don't know, t cube over 3 plus uh, 236. You just substitute to get some polynomial one variable. And what together, and altogether, it means that you get a multi valued function in one variable, algebraic, kind of algebraic function. Uh, which is also uh, maybe called kind of G. G of Q is uh, equal to F0, it's equal to t, uh, F0 of t, where t is a solution equation, uh, which is a solution of equation t plus t04 is equal to Q. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of. Uh, what is, what, how did what is the uh, motivation for this power for F0? No, just because from this, I restrict my one form ah, okay. to, to Lagrangian manifold. So yeah. Well, yeah. 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 So eventually, what I get after all these uh, things, I, I, I get some algebraic function in one variable. G, G, G of Q. Q, Q or Q or maybe X. Uh, it's point, uh, fun, you get algebraic fu function on, on one variable. And I claim this is a really funny game with this algebraic function, which you can do. Uh, yeah, so then one can try to maybe do it on computer or whatever. You get a function which has kind of kind of have four-valued four function. Because my equation has four solutions, and yeah, so the solution of the equation is substitute to the things. Now, um, mm, now I should write wall crossing structure. I put h bar equal to 1, uh, and, and I have these walls. And where are walls? 
uh, walls where, uh, maybe called it G i t i from one to four, J y, uh, maybe x, let's say, one to four. And I wrote walls in C, with uh, coordinates, namely, uh, uh, walls are imaginary part of G of x, is equal to imaginary part of gg of x for i non equal to g. Yeah, so I get this uh, thing. And if one analyzes what happens, you get something like three ramification points. Uh, so one get some picture like this. I don't know. You get uh, three critical points. And then you should kind of continue. Yeah, you get some picture. You get some finite graph. So you change Q to X? Yeah, I change Q is equal to X, yeah. Yeah, Q is equal to X. I get some finite graph, but the graph will be oriented because uh, uh, along edges, a uh, real part uh, uh, on, edge, on edges, you get two branches have the same edge in a part. Orientation. Then read g of x minus read g of x. Uh, it's positive and increases. I just first I pick order and uh, uh, automatically has uh, can order which one is first, which one is second by real part, and then have a direction in which direction this real, uh, difference between real part increases. So I get some kind of positive increasing function on my graph. And now I should put some, uh, now I told you that for wall crossing structure, I should put some integer numbers because uh, all I isolate critical points. The numbers I know I should put one here uh, near each uh, thing. And then uh, I have one rule and I have another rule which uniquely Uh, uh, by induction, kind of by growing to this floor, reconstruct my numbers. So I don't have to solve this uh, equations for holomorphic curves at all. Yeah, so it's automatically I uh, can do it. So it's canonically defined. All crossing structure is canonically defined by initial data. And what you get, you get local system on C, which is not very interesting, of rank four. Uh, rank four because this projection is here for value to get rank four local system on C. Just vector space of dimension four. But uh, what go, go, goes on? Uh, so I get this picture, but then at infinity I can go, I can draw, draw some other uh, line. So it will be blue lines at infinity. And as x goes to infinity, uh, given by a different equation, but when the real part of gix is equal to real part of gjx. Ah, it's, are, are they walls? No, no, these are not walls. But this I think, yeah, but this I think uh, uh, responsible for Stocks uh, f uh, for stocks filtration uh, uh, mm, when consider corresponding uh, uh, differential equations, we should have uh, filtration solutions uh, labeled by uh, real parts of uh, uh, things. And my vector bundle will be kind of uh, uh, will have kind of basis of, of four elements, uh, the solution of everywhere outside of the walls, and I glue them together, and I know how the order outside of the walls. And what I get, I get kind of stocks data for these things. So, so I get kind of transcendental description of differential. How do you get the stocks data exactly? Yeah. Ah, because uh, m m my, my local system is, has canonical basis yes. corresponding to solution of my equations. T, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. And, and then outside of these blue lines, I have the ordering of them given by uh, real, real parts. Yes. So I get filtration of this story. And, and then the service case works marvelously, so you get filtration different stock sectors, and this is like all axiomatics uh, of uh, anti. Uh, mm. 
Yeah, essentially what goes on, on C at infinity you decompose by several sectors. In your vector space you get a, a, a complete flag in each sector which uh, change uh, if you go through the stock's direction. And this we can read from all this picture in a completely explicit way. So, yeah, so it, one can really run computer program and uh, get the story. Yeah, it, it, is it some additional structure to this whole process? No, no, it just follows from, uh, if, yeah, this uh, uh, stock six and infinite something which you should I didn't tell you, but uh, it kind of naturally follows from this all, all the game. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, but that's how eventually it leads to some uh, abs absolutely elementary uh, story. And this is very mysterious, in fact, because uh, 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 I conjecture there is canonical mo uh, D module, and uh, this D module should be exponential motivic. So. Eventually, it should uh, expect that should have something like on x cross a fine line. You get motivic d module, then multiply by exponential function, take pro projection. Uh, and here, it's it's not clear to why it's game motivic. So I get only beta realization. And, and but uh, what did you say now? I didn't catch the, the last phrase. Uh, yeah, this. Uh, uh, I said it should be some d module associated to this uh, exact Lagrangian manifold. But it should be not arbitrary, it should be uh, what's called exponential motivic. Mm. Uh, and which means that it should have motivic d module in a product of manifold with a fine line. Again, some sub quotient of some Gauss Mannion connection. Mm. Where, where is that fine line here? It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, no, it's something very general, it's related to irregular singularities. Uh, no, in general, on, on complex algebraic varieties, one consider exponential motivic d modules in the, defined in the following way. You consider product of your variety with kind of universal affine line, take motivic d module there, multiply by exponential function in last variable, and take push, push forward to your Manifold, kind of, kind of family of Fourier transforms. Yeah, I think I now have to stop here. Yeah. Yeah.